Hey guys, it's me, Nalia, once again. Today, we will be talking about caterpillars. Don't worry, this hasn't turned into the Discovery Channel. New comfort, new strength, new hope, new help, new promises to bank your life on. You have an altogether new spirit, new joy. It's been a few months now since I've been doing research on this. I, at first I was like, why is the Holy Spirit guiding me into talking about caterpillars? I never paid attention to the process in which a caterpillar um, becomes a butterfly. It's good to pay attention to nature because you can learn like very deep secrets about life and about God and about, you know, Christianity just by observing nature. This is not the Discovery Channel, but I want to take you guys on a short journey so that you guys can understand what I'm talking about. So let's go. The caterpillar, the minute it is born, it eats and it eats and it eats and it doesn't stop eating until it's stored up all the energy and all that it needs to begin the process of metamorphosis. A caterpillar is actually a baby and a butterfly is a, an adult. Maybe that's probably why all it does is eat. Because when you think about babies, once the caterpillar has eaten as much as it can, this is when it stops eating. As it begins the process of metamorphosis, it actually breaks down its own body. And once it's been enveloped or wrapped inside the chrysalis and it turns into this goo, um, it doesn't die. It just gets rid of its old body and from the remnants of the old body, it creates the new body. I'm like shocked and mind blown by Once the caterpillar turns into the soup and this goo, that's when the cells that are in the soup begin to form the eyes, the wings, and everything for the butterfly. So I'm like, okay, but how does this, how does this like compare to the Christian life? Like what, what is the Holy Spirit trying to show me or what is he trying to highlight here? I was guided to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 15, right? If anyone is therefore in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away and in comes the new. So it's really a lesson in understanding that the old can't exist with the new. What was interesting to me in learning about the butterfly in the process of metamorphosis is that um, in order for the butterfly to emerge, the caterpillar has to completely be gone. And in truth, it's not beneficial for the caterpillar to remain a caterpillar. The, the, a matured caterpillar is a butterfly. How did such an involved developmental process come to be? We don't know for sure. The leading theory is that the caterpillar is actually a drawn out version of a life stage that takes place inside the egg for some other insects. Uh... Regardless of how complete metamorphosis originated, it's become part of the life cycles of a dizzying number of insect species. When you look at how the caterpillar goes through this process, it's just very, it's very particular and it, it's very detailed. Watching the video, I'm like, how is this even possible? that this can happen and that's the mystery and the miracle of it all and um i think that's that's just what's so powerful about it and so digging deeper i the question is not how the change happens but the more important question is why does the change happen why do we need to change why does the caterpillar needs to change why do we need a new heart a new spirit to be made into a new creation The caterpillar cannot reproduce. Only butterflies can reproduce. So if the caterpillar doesn't change into its adult self, it's not able to produce. That lets us understand why the process of metamorphosis is, is 
is necessary and why the caterpillar has to change into a butterfly. And when you connect it, it's like the fruits of the spirit. When you start thinking about it, it's like the fruits of the spirit, the only way you bear fruit is when you're in the spirit. So if you never come into the new life as a Christian, you can't bear fruit. You can't reproduce. You can't give what you're supposed to. And so if you remain a kid, therefore, if you remain a caterpillar as a Christian, you can't produce. Wait, what? What happens with us as Christians is we want to be butterflies and caterpillars at the same time. And even the caterpillar understands that it's no way for him to reproduce if he does not get rid of his old self. This is the important part. We don't keep our old living room sofa. When we buy a new one, we get rid of it because the whole goal is not to keep the old, but to bring in the new. So the same thing is with our spiritual lives. You can't hold on to the old to usher in the new. Gather the shreds of my broken self, wishing to finish the puzzle, the essence long lost. Stand by and behold my annihilation, languid and painful, ravishing nonetheless until all that is left is a cluster of atoms. But stay, stay until it begins, the genesis, the beginning of a new end, the building of a new puzzle. Watch me rise back up, green by green, piece by piece. It's when it seems like everything is ending, that's when the beginning begins. So going deeper, if you look at the life of Paul, if you look at the life of the disciples, right? You see how Paul, who was a bloodthirsty persecutor, becomes a tender-hearted Christian. John, the vindictive man, becomes the apostle of love. Peter, the hot-headed Christian who was ready to fight and ready to do whatever it was, becomes this gentle person. He's just completely transformed and completely changed and unrecognizable. And that's what the Holy Spirit was trying to highlight. That when the old self has been put away and when the new self comes in, you become unrecognizable. And that's what I realized about the butterfly. When you look at a caterpillar and a butterfly, you're like, how does that turn into that? You are supposed to be unrecognizable you're supposed to talk the same you're not supposed to have the same attitude the same behavior your goals are different your aim in life is different your hope is different Remember, the Bible said it's God who prunes us and when he prunes us he takes away the old the de degraded degenerated portions of us and he puts in its place the new so where there was hate he takes it away and he replaces it with love. Where there was fear, he takes it during the process of metamorphosis and then he replaces it with courage because you're not supposed to remain the same. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The caterpillar changes its form and becomes something majestic, a whole new creature. And in no way does it resemble its former self. And God wants to do the same, but inside of us. What is seen in the butterfly's appearance is seen in our behavior, in our actions, in our speech. The butterfly doesn't speak, but when we look at it, we are told of the glory of God. No, y'all don't understand. The butterfly doesn't speak, but when we look at it, it reveals to us something very mysterious about God. If the butterfly transform into something so beautiful and so magnificent, you can only imagine that when we are transformed, we who are more valuable than the birds, we will be transformed into something more beautiful and more magnificent even than the butterflies. Our faces will shine just like Moses' face shined when he descended down to, from the mountain and came among his people and the world gasped and they wondered 
and they will gasp and wonder about us, children of God. And they will see the beauty of God that is shared. I'm obsessed with these blue butterflies. They're so pretty to me. Like, between this one and the glass butterfly, I'm just like, I'm just so obsessed with these blue ones. They're just so cute to me. I was watching this video about butterflies and the guy said it exceptionally well. They're they're moving flowers. They're flowers that are able to fly. They're flowers that have wings and eyes and legs. When you think about it, it's like, how, how is this even possible? And how is this even real? The more interesting part is as beautiful as that looks to us, to, you know, the predators, that's scary. It scares their predators away and it makes their predators keep distance because it looks poisonous to predators. But to us, it's actually something of wonder and beauty. I think when you really start to dig deeper into nature, it, it, it draws you closer to God because you start to think deep about the things that God has created. It looks like a painting that God has decided to bring to life <laughs> or artwork that God has decided to bring to life and to breathe life into and they're actual moving, living pieces of art.